You are watching Good News Channel, the good news from the Almighty God to the believers. Gentiles, the unsearchable riches of Christ. Nine. And to make how many men? There is a grace given that when you come under the influence of that grace, you must see. I hope you understand the story. He's saying a grace was given to me. And that by the privilege of God's power, the effectual working, He gave me a grace that when people come under the influence of that grace, He can make all men see. There is a grace that can take away blindness, regardless of your level of education. Listen carefully. Regardless of your level of exposure. See, there are things in life that you have to be educated to understand. There are things in life you have to be wealthy to understand. There are things in life you have to be poor to understand. There are things in life you have to be ignorant to understand. But there is a grace that can make all men see. Regardless of your level, regardless of your background, whether you can speak English or not is not the issue. The grace has capacity to quicken your understanding. He says, and it shall make him of weak understanding. If the matters of the spirit were left to educated people, then those who didn't have the privilege of formal education will be out of God's program. If it were left only to the rich, then the poor will not have a chance. Are we together? If it was left only to the exposed and enlightened, then those that did not have that kind of privilege will not have anything. But thank God for His grace. That when He pours His Spirit is upon all flesh, and that this grace can make all men see what is the fellowship, it's the word koinonia, partnership, the sharing, drinking from the same vessel of the mystery. So you can partake of a mystery, not just an anointing. You can partake of the grace that has made a man to see, and you will see the same thing. The Lord began to deal with us yesterday on hosting His power. We're still going to explore along power and impartation. God began to adjust our understanding to see and understand the dynamics of true spiritual power. Isaiah chapter 35. My assignment tonight is first and foremost to help us by the Spirit understand the value of spiritual empowerment. Because until you recognize the value for a thing, the, the energy to pursue is not there. Isaiah chapter 35, we'll read the first six verses. The wilderness and the solitary place shall be glad for them, and the desert shall rejoice and blossom as a rose. It shall blossom abundantly and rejoice even with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given to it. The excellency of Carmel and Sharon, they shall see the glory of the Lord and the excellency of our God. Verse 3. It says, Strengthen ye the weak hands. It says, And confirm the feeble knees. Verse 4. Say to them who are of a fearful heart, Be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance, even God with a recompense. He will come and save you. As a result, then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. Then shall the lame man leap as an heart, and the tongue of the dumb shall sing. For in the wilderness shall water speak out, and speak in the desert. The Bible paints a picture of what is happening in an environment when the power of God is introduced. Many believers have not been trained to see the value of spiritual empowerment. For many believers, spiritual empowerment is, is, is an elective that you choose if you are interested in doing ministry. 
So if you do not have any passion for ministry, it's unnecessary, it's a nuisance. All I need is just the word. But the word did not make any meaning until the word was empowered. You are not a blessing until you are empowered spiritually. You read from Genesis to Revelation, there was no one who had capacity to do God good without God anointing him. God will make a man, build that man, teach that man the systems of the kingdom. And then when all is said and done, among the many things, he will grant access to his anointing. I hope you know that God's power, God's anointing is not... The same anointing that God works with is what He gives you. So that your possibilities can match. Because man does not have in himself the capacity to produce God's dimension of results. If it is the Lord's doing, then it is marvelous. If it's not marvelous, it was your declare for me for walking. It's human to walk. There's nothing supernatural as it were about walking. But when you begin to manifest a dimension not given to men, it proves that there was an energy that was outsourced. No one was allowed to serve in the temple without empowerment. No matter how silly the responsibility was, you needed empowerment. No matter how skilled you were, every time God would call a man, out of whatever it is that he does, they must be empowered. Including Mary, the mother of Jesus. Her carrying Jesus for nine months did not empower her. She had to join the 120 to wait until the spirit. Was it not the same spirit that put Jesus in her womb? But that did not empower her. The Bible is full of stories of people who were absolutely weak. Their humanity was so glaring, but not for too long. At a point in their life and in their experience, they had a strange encounter with the Spirit of the living God. Then they were anointed and things turned around in their lives. There is no man of God who can produce God's dimension of results and be a blessing. Just being a wonderful, humane human being, there has to be a translation by the power of God. Are we together? It is very, very important. Zechariah chapter 4, please, and verse 6. The prophet is speaking here. Zechariah 4 and verse 6. Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of God unto Joshua Selman, saying, Not by might, human strength, nor by human power, but it is by my spirit. Excelling in your business, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit. Doing the kind of ministry that will bring glory to Jesus, not by might, nor by power. Getting a job, not by mouth, nor by power. Being favored, not by might, nor by power. Are you getting what I'm saying? Breaking a chain that was there before you were born. There were people stronger than you. That chain kept them there. It is not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit. You must learn early to give up on the strength of the flesh. It will embarrass you and continue to recycle pain to your life. For by the arm of flesh shall no man prevail. When a spirit is oppressing you, there is no machine that will diagnose it. Machines don't diagnose spirits. They diagnose the effect of them. But there is a word that is a discerner. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. In Isaiah chapter 61, the messianic prophecy, we know this theologically to be, it says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because, in other words, this is the object, the motive, the motivation behind that. 
he had anointed me to preach glad tidings to the meek. Then it says, he had sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, the opening of the prison to them that are bound. Every time I read this scripture, when I get to that prison part, it touches me. Who are these men in prison? Because they still walk around. Yet the Bible says they are not only tied, they are in prison. 